Hello and w- welcome back to episode of Explosions and Fire! Yeah! <laughs> Where are you? Where you at? Oh, you're trying to hide. Oh, time to get fucked over, mate. Oh, sugar, hexamine, red phosphorus, white phosphorus, green phosphorus, Nutella. The atmosphere is nature's bin. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, it's just my bin. We can kind of understand that it's never going to be a powerful explosive because I remember back in my day we got to use chlorates. None of this pussy but chlorate shit. Well, we didn't fuck the solvent, it's benzene. Today we're going to be talking about one of the greatest skills you can have as a chemist, and that's the ability to hold a good grudge. Some people get into chemistry just to, you know, help society and benefit mankind. Some people get into chemistry just to fucking set fire to things and fucking blow stuff up. So here we have the pyromaniac Niall Red just lighting fires in his fume hood like a maniac. Come on, Niall Red, there's more to chemistry than just lighting fires. Come on, just settle down. Oh, you're my hero, mate. Inspiration. So here's a relatable thing we can all relate to. Have you ever put perchloric acid onto bismuth metal and then blow torched it and notice that it explodes? What's, what's up with that? These crystals are so big and so good, I could probably stick them in my braces and get a solvable diffraction pattern during my next dental checkup. My teeth are still fucked though. Use the shitty plastic cups. They're like beakers, but you don't have to clean them. They just go straight into the ocean. And <laughs> oh no. I've had braces for over two years now. <sighs> I don't even remember what smooth teeth taste like. Magic is real, kids. It's just very, very poisonous. Asunder. As, as, asunder. Fuck. This is not really plastic explosives. This is Play-Doh. You've got to be extremely biased against certain chemicals. You can turn gloves into grape soda. Now that, that's content you can, you can fucking relate to. You. Gloves into grape soda, man. That's... <laughs> Gloves into fucking grape soda, man. Fucking grapes. More dangerous and more reactive than the solid form, but it's fine because I'm a professional. Oh, God. Imagine what Edmund Davy could have achieved if he had access to Alibaba, right? I, that keeps me up at night, honestly, that kind of question. Oh, mate, I'm going to build you a shrine. I suppose it's really just one of these chemicals that's very special to me. So we grind it up. I like to imagine him very old, remembering back on his career and thinking that was definitely my crowning scientific moment ahead of the time I developed an entire field of chemistry and also won the Nobel Prize. Fucking call it Cox One. Nah, it's taken. Cox Two. Uh, no. What about S One? Also no. I don't know, piss one? No. Fucking... Piss two? Yeah, whatever, call it piss two. Of BNCP, bis cobalt BNCP, BCNP, P... Oh yeah, the peeing in the pool bit! Maybe here are marked. Other alkaline substances such as soda, common kali, and see. No fucking polymer magic for you. Are you cheeky bugger? You're trying to kill me, aren't you? You're trying to kill me, you sly dog. So Daniel is a filthy scumbag liar, and um, I will hold him accountable for every mistake from now on. Polymers. It's great and all, but I love the implication that this dude is just like on a conference call. <laughs> Oh no, that's my reaction mix. Oh, I can't believe I've done that. Oh, that'll fuck everything over. <sighs> fuck. I fucking built you a shrine! So you can't, you just can't compete with it. And that's, and there's always lots of things that most chemists will just refuse to work with, such as like hydrofluoric acid or osmium tetroxide, the physics department. Some explosives, they're just too good to be made by like mere mortals, like me or you. What chance did I have? <sighs> I love you. We're really quite at the peak of alchemy. Continue, continue. <laughs> okay. 
I do affect your eyes and for you to smell it. Apparently, it's not nearly enough to uh, to actually explode. Sorry, I didn't hear anything you said. All right, I'm gonna let you in a little secret here. Copper is a shill element that was invented in the 1930s by a man called Jan Teller simply because undergraduate inorganic chemistry wasn't hard enough. The hardware store down the road. God bless you, Bunnings. Plastic bottle, that's a polymer. And this foam, that, that's a polymer. Is an almond a polymer? Maybe 2000s, maybe the 1990s, possibly. It was patented in 1961. Good year. What's it? Now, even a ground almond will burn if you put enough potassium nitrate in there, you know. It's kind of cheating, really. But you can still freely piss in a pool without fear of your urethra blowing up. For example, this is urea, which I got for like, uh, re-precipitate it out and kind of make something out of it. And he's over five decades ago. Fuck the 60s, man. However, let's do one more experiment. Almonds also aren't that flammable, the dumb cunts, but in the hope that it would kind of like impregnate the polymer with oxidizer. I mean, an imp- Boy, cunt. Now that we have the elemental iodine, the hardest part is not accidentally making any <laughs> illicit drugs with it. I don't make illicit drugs. Hell yeah, it's time. That's art. That, that has to and work. And that is, of course, raw power extruded out of that syringe. This will form quite dense little, like, nuggets. Generally, that's pretty illegal to manufacture explosives. A lot of people have said I'm very Australian, but we're about to do the most Australian thing I've ever done. That's right, we're outsourcing difficult work to overseas. As idle as I'd as I'd as I as I'll as I as I do as I'd as I'd as you do as I'd as I'd la plus instable des substances. It's sensitive as dicks. Holy shit, dicks. Holy moly. They made the as idle as idle as you do as I'd as I'd. For me, the things I really don't want to work with is ammonia gas, sulfur chlorides, and anything that's vaguely the color yellow. There was a lot of research done in the 1950s, a decade I like to call the pre 60s. What is an explosive? How is an explosive? And even I think at points we've asked why is an explosive. But I don't think we've ever asked when is an explosive. Trees grow on cellulose, so it's much easier to just fucking nitrate a tree than to make some specialist. At this point, what started out as a conspiracy, I now believe is fact, right? All yellow chemistry is trash. If your synthesis at any point goes yellow, it just stops working, all right? I feel like we're crowdsourcing explosives here, which is, um, Wrong. Ranking all the elements is hard, and it's hard to pick the favorite element, but if we do it, coming out on top is uh, cobalt. Um, you gotta rank them. Some, someone's, one of them's gotta come first. You're gonna be like, oh, gold. Oh, what about hydrogen? No. No. Back, back to you. Mate, you can't call it an editing note if it's in the script, all right? Just fucking let me explain it, all right? Fuck. It has seen a bit of a revival lately as a bit of a relatable icon element because it forms rainbows all the time, doesn't like to be straight, and is incredibly dense. So we don't have many options, um, so it's time to do something moronically stupid. So would you count yourself as a, a piss chemist? Alright, we've wasted enough time with this shill element. It's time to go back to our champion fucking top tier element, cobalt. It's fucking alchemy. Say, so, oh, well, there was supernova, supernova neutron star is a fucking form of explosion. Oh, don't, you know, I'm... Download my band's mixtape, fucking suck me off, I don't know. Personally, I've always thought of bismuth as lead for people who fear death. Yes, so I have these extreme prejudices against these chemicals. You know, no worries, whatever. Somewhere in the middle is... I haven't worked that out yet, that's fine. What if we get oxygen and we put it on the oxygen? Does detonate when hit with a hammer in much the same way that carrot won't detonate when hit with a hammer? How are we all? Don't have to answer that. Don't. Please don't answer that. You... Everything is fine. And Okay, no, that actually is carrot. That's weird. Plants are whack. Right? Plants, man. I don't question the plant. You've got your sulfur chlorides, which smell like shit. And you've got your ammonia, which smells like piss. And you're fucking just putting them together and just getting your starting material back. And you're like, what am I doing with my life? I smell like piss and shit. And all I have is fucking sulfur. It looked like I had so much essential oil that I was ready to message my old high school friends and fellow military wives about this great opportunity that I had. We're actually following a proper science paper from the 60s. Fuck me, I love the 60s. Okay, so it's bloody hot, but is it hot enough?
Hey, Vsauce, Mike. Remember, benzene, it's back. Which is good, because it means it's not fucking yellow. Doritos, they kind of burn. So, is this plant committing a crime? Or can you make the plant illegal? No, you can't. <laughs> Imagine making a plant illegal, that's stupid. Benzene? No, that makes fucking sense. Alchemy is trying to turn things yellow, and chemistry is trying to avoid things turning yellow. Seriously, the more yellow this goes, the more likely it is just to blow up at any moment. But go to which Wikipedia page? <laughs> So yeah, that's about all I've got because I'm legally not allowed to have x-ray equipment, apparently. So, look <laughs> cool that protects most of the world except Australia from getting skin cancer. Two out of three Australians. Two out of three Australians. And I've managed to prove one guy on the internet writing two sentences many years ago about some obscure compound. I proved him wrong, I think. Whoever you are, fuck you. So all up, it is the most flammable, most toxic, and most illegal chemical that I currently own. Nice. Fucking no one remembers the 90s. Do you remember the 90s? No. See, no one does. God, it smells awful. Even in here, it still smells like someone's fucking pissed and shit all over everything. Doesn't it get a point you want, you want it to be safe. All the Ah, uh, this is frustrating. Okay. Actually blow up easier with the carbon tet than the sodium would. So once again, we subject our chemical. well, you know, electrons aren't real, chemistry isn't real, everything's made up, so do that, because yellow is fucking disgusting, and I still haven't moved on from that grudge. Holy shit, I have issues. Shit, man. Don't ask me for funding. Yeah, let's quit wire ahead. All right, one more experiment. But I like to think I have improved my safety culture in the last couple of years, and I no longer use glass jars for things that will violently explode for no reason. Now we have all this dichloromethane and water waste, so we have to dispose of this somehow. Anyway, let's press on and not think about the consequences of our actions. And for some reason, no one's taken away my oxygen cylinder that I have. So, and green's a Christmas colour. Is this a Christmas episode? That we're hardly throwing the baby out with the bong water here. The plant manufactures the explosive and you just extract it. Then technically you're outsourcing the crime to the plant and you're not doing anything wrong. So Mercury Fulminate was the first commercial explosive and within just a few decades of it being invented, Britain was using it to bomb people in Afghanistan for the very first time. That's really the history of explosives. As soon as it starts heating up, I'm always the first one into bunnies to get all those pool chemical supplies I need for a great summer. What kind of pool do you have, mate? What? If you believe in it, it's real. Fucking, I don't know. Alright, really, I gotta level with you here. Chemistry isn't hard, alright? It's easy. Just learn all the rules, and then learn all the exceptions to the rules. Into our least favourite test tube, just the test tube that we hate most of all. Go get a Graham condenser, my least favourite condenser to use. Fuck me, chemistry really did fucking peak in the 60s, didn't it? Was this guy split seconds away from disaster? This force is called, known as buoyancy. Or did this guy's experiments get rigged by Richard Hammond? Okay, John, go for it. No trick. Have had two instants with it, and one that punched a piece of glass in my eye. No wonder I'm making bad science shows as an adult. God, what a terrible example they set for me that I followed. It's all coming together, fuck. Imagine a death charge in a bathtub. Fair enough. Is this guy called Strau Straudinger? Strau Straudinger? I just forgot that it was acid and I was just spraying acid droplets everywhere. All over the metal of the stand and the camera and everywhere. It's pretty awful to deal with initially, it's all goopy, but you do get a free My Little Pony figurine at the bottom of every jar, so that's chloroform's older, more poisonous boomer uncle. It might not surprise you to learn that you can't just buy chloroform at the local hardware store these days. I'm sure you could in the 60s. Nitrogen trichloride is the worst chemical. So I became a five minute craft YouTuber, fucking bought a hot glue gun, and I fucking five minute crafted my way for hours. It's called Stowardinger. Stowardinger. Stowardinger? 
So I made the perfect craft. I spent like six minutes on this craft. It was absolutely perfect. Turns out in the 1960s, God bless you 1960s. The mysteries of science. We can go to the font of all chemistry knowledge, YouTube, Time to shamelessly plagiarize, but in a formally accepted manner. That's right, it's the literature review time. And by literature, I mean other YouTube videos. We're not going into the actual literature, it was science. So how can the alkali metal react with it if it's just made up of the- That's when one of my Discord admins, Doyle, reminded me that there's a whole load of information out on the internet that isn't just on Wikipedia. That's right, German Wikipedia. Finally, we have the whole goddamn squad. Squad! Like most indoor swimming pools are are on the verge of a detonation. <laughs> Stau Dinger. Stau Dinger. Stau. Stau Dinger. Stau Dinger. It's kind of halfway between gasoline and... Fake lime, you know those lime flavoured lollies? Kind of cross between, I'd say, like, wet, mouldy carpet and chamomile tea. Even after all five of those minutes of craft, we're still not getting any explosion. He was on a mission to make diamonds. He just wanted to make diamonds. We once again have to go back to the source of all information, not YouTube, Germany. So perchlorates are often used in everyday applications like fireworks and rockets and sidewinder missiles. I started to get, you know, flashes of my own mortality. I love you, Hammer. If you win the Nobel Prize, you, you're a sellout. Um, don't do drugs. Don't go to school. Stay indoors. Don't dump things in the atmosphere. I don't know. That's about it. No idea why that is. Uh, we'll probably just blame science on that one. Cover it in tin foil like it's a roommate and we're pulling some prank on it. If this project has taught me anything, it's that I'm surprisingly bad at gardening. What the big JC does here is he adds ammonia to hypochlorite, but he also adds in a complete disregard for his own life, which I think is the key important ingredient. <laughs> I need to publish more papers. <laughs> small scale, small scale. That being said, for some reason I only have a small amount of dichloromethane left. I swear I distilled a whole lot. Soxilic extractor. Soxilic. Sox. Doesn't matter. Pretty sure I need this for later. It's really, I mean, is it purple because of ghosts? Or is it purple because of surface plasma resonance? It's 50-50 either way. So the only risks really associated with this, high pressure gases, oxidants, extreme cold temperatures, extreme high voltages, and explosives. Oh, and ozone's also horrifically toxic. But apart from that, there's no other safety concerns. I don't think I've achieved very much over this year. 